So you've downloaded Tribes of Midgard as it's free with PlayStation Plus this month. How do you actually play it? Let's give you some quick tips. There are a couple different game modes at the start of this game and there is a revamp of a survival mode coming in the future. Right now you can play matchmaking of the saga mode or you can play solo. This is the main way to play Tribes of Midgard but it's quite challenging. Effectively you've only got a short amount of time to complete the saga, defeating the end game boss and defending your settlement from attacks. So before jumping into that you might want to try just survival mode and make the game a lot easier just so you can get used to the way things work. You gain experience for everything you do in Tribes of Midgard that levels up the season kind of pass. Although it's a season pass you don't spend actual money on, it's all earned in game. But I highly recommend that you try survival mode with a lot of these features moved over to the left. You won't get as much XP but it will make the game a little bit more manageable as there is quite a few systems to learn. And remember it's a roguelike, once the tree or life is destroyed that's it you're going to have to restart in a fresh new match. You can make the giant's health easier, you can get more loot and resources and a whole bunch more so do make it as easy as you can just to give it your first go. Tribes is a challenging roguelike survival game. Otherwise if you think you're ready to go let's jump straight into a saga mode. The very first time you spawn in you won't have any gear or equipment unless you've somehow managed to get a pre-order. You can get start kits that will give you either tools, weapons, armour or some sort of special abilities or even rooms that will help you in the very first stages. But your very first time playing you might not have any of that stuff so you've got to go around just picking up sticks and any loose stones that you come across. This is the tree of life that you've got to stop from being destroyed. When you gather souls from killing enemies and looting and gathering resources you can choose to donate the souls to the tree or you can go ahead and upgrade various NPCs in the settlement so that they'll sell you even more weapons and armours at a higher level. You'll also need a big bunch of the souls to go ahead and upgrade your defences. You can increase the fortified gates by putting cut stone, blocks and iron ore ingots and you can also add archery towers in the future too. But for now leave them to the back burner. If you're in location of the tree and it's blue it will heal you, otherwise this healing NPC will also do it but then you'll have a cooldown. Next to it will be a notice board, this is where you can pick up what kind of saga boss you want to do or possibly the prologue which is kind of based on showing you how to defeat a giant. Inside you'll find a golden altar, this is where you can spend your golden horns, the in-game currency, to get a random rune. It will come from the poor runes that you've unlocked either via the season pass or for doing various challenges. So at the start you'll have a limited amount. I wouldn't recommend spending too many of your golden horns for this yet, they're better off being spent on more starter packs to give you more variety and getting a quick boost when you start a game. But if you've got a few golden horns then why not spend just one just to see the room pop out. I know how curious people get so give it at least one go. Anywho after that and once you've chosen one of the missions like I said you've got to choose what saga boss to go for, there's two of them, there's Jumunda and then you've got the Fenra wolf boss. The Jumunda sea serpent is the most recent one, I reckon you could probably go for that. If you also take a look inside your equipment you can go ahead and equip runes. Now weapons and runes automatically equip the first time you ever pick them up but later on you'll find that sometimes you have to double check you've got the right item equipped as when you upgrade or you buy stuff it doesn't always do so and you have got limited space. You will pick up weapons and stuff from enemies that you come across and kill and sometimes they can clog up your inventory so make sure you dump stuff off in a community chest nearby. First off though we're going to go and get some actual weapons you've got two slots, you can mix it up and have swords and axes or swords and hammers but I would stress have at least one ranged weapon with you so that is the bow and then choose to either main a sword, an axe or a hammer. You can see we can get the basic stuff but after that we're going to need to upgrade and also get more resources and yes at the very end the last legendary epic gear that is the stuff that will require golden horns to also craft if you want to use them. You won't be unlocking that stuff on your first go, trust me. So it's a game, you know how to play, go and visit every NPC, say hello, but here is the repair bench, that's where you can repair your weapons for a small amount of souls and also here is the armourer where you can buy a shield, most recommended, and see if you can get the most basic of armours as well. 
You tend to get weapon drops more than armor pieces from enemies I've found so far, so it's always a good idea to make sure your armor's as good as it can be. Different armors will give you elemental damage effects, so they'll either protect you against the heat or the cold, or they'll give you certain elemental boosts. Some of the giants are tied to elements, so you've got a giant that's more in dark energy, but really it's poison. Then you've got obviously a lightning one, and then you've got an ice giant. So having the opposite element will do more damage against them giants. So for the lightning one, if you use use poison you'll do more damage for the ice giant if you use fire weapons you'll do more damage we'll go into that a little bit more detail in another video but that's the basics of it again for now getting used to the game just upgrade as soon as you can to whatever weapons next and if you can't unlock any of these even though you've got the resources make sure you've actually upgraded them by tabbing l1 and then donating a bunch of souls the cost of these souls will increase each time you upgrade, so yeah, don't stink it all into your tree, sometimes you do have to make sure you upgrade your NPCs. There are farms that you can build that will generate resources for you, or if you play a multiplayer you can actually put some of your spare stuff, weapons and armours inside the chest. This means that everyone in the team can go ahead and use them weapons and stuff. The trap art is where you're going to get your potions, you'll also get heat proof elixirs, cold proof elixirs as well as different traps like explosions and more. Also a bunch of other stuff that you won't be getting in your first run but this will give you chances to either boost your actual bonus energy or maybe help you repair stuff on the move. Some of these potions have only just been added in for Season 2, and so they are a great addition. I personally would avoid ever buying any of the explosion traps or anything like that. I find them pretty useless. They're just jars that you'll place down, and then you have to actually hit or use a bow and arrow on to make them go off. So having weapons is important, but having tools so that you can actually start mining stone and chopping trees down is even more important. So make sure you go to this guy first and you pick up a pickaxe and a axe. All weapons degrade, so you are going to have to either repair them or buy new ones. And this is where you can also buy building pieces. In the first version of the game when it launched, you couldn't swim in water, so ground was much more important. But nowadays, now that you can swim, it isn't needed as much. Although there are some uses for it that I'm sure you'll discover later on. Other than that, you've got a whole bunch of other little building pieces like ramps to get up to higher places where there's usually some loot, as well as some defense pieces where you can actually put it around to give even extra protection or even sometimes corral giants or enemies in a certain direction. Again, I would avoid buying any of this in your first attempts though until you get some proper resources going and then maybe toy it and mess around with some of this. This is also where you're going to pick up your ammunition and arrows and again you've got all different types of elemental damages so again super useful taking out giants this is why a bow is good and it's easier to get some of these than it is buying specially infused elemental weapons. The last one is one of the most important as well you're going to need refined processed ores cut stone and wooden planks to go ahead and upgrade the farms around you and the brand new shipyard and that's how you can build a ship to explore some of the other lands. Remember the game is procedurally generated so no playthrough is the same. So in order, pick yourself a pickaxe and an axe, then go and get yourself some weapons, then some armour, then some healing potions. That's the order you should be doing it in my opinion. Don't donate any of your souls to the tree or the defences. You want to save your souls for upgrading some of the NPCs and making sure you've got some of the farms up and running. And when you start, the defences will be shut and for the first two nights, maybe even three, your tree will be okay. By the third night, they may have broken through some of your defences if you've left them all shut and your tree will take a bit of damage but it can be repaired fairly easily. Although I would argue that you want to be around for the third day, if your actual defences are about to be destroyed, you're better off opening the gate and letting the enemies through and then dealing with them. That's because I think it still costs a little bit more to rebuild rather than repair defences. That was a teleport stone. You'll come across fast travel shrines all around the map and you can use them to get back super quickly. There is some other quests on that notice board that I didn't maybe mention. These are smaller little missions that will give you rewards and you'll notice that some of them have got things like quest fragments. To open up the portal to face the final boss you do need a whole bunch of different quest fragments and so you're going to have to complete some of these if you really want to be focused on finishing the saga boss. But again I would say just go for something easy, make sure you do the prologue first and then you can take a look at the other stuff as you get more experience in the game. So the hell things will start attacking every night, although there is one night where you get a day off, and that is on the fifth night. On the fourth night, there's actually a super hard version of the hell thing raids. It's called the Blood Moon, and this means you'll be attacked by hard versions and more. 
But you should have no problems up until that day dispatching with any enemies that do come and attack your gate. And obviously if you can have the time to go and defend your gate and not let it take any damage, that is always better. But if you're exploring far out wide and you haven't come across somewhere to fast travel, then in the first two nights you shouldn't have to panic or worry too much. Although do remember, they do drop souls if you kill them. They don't drop souls if the day turns through and you won't actually get any bonuses. So again, it's another good reason to go and attack them to farm some of the souls easily. You also get special drops from health things that you'll need to craft and make armors and weapons. So these are the kinds of stuff that you can pick up, flint and maybe sticks or grass. You will be able to take enemies on, even bare fisted if you need and want, and you should be able to take care of them more or less okay. You've got a pretty generous health pool when it starts. Each biome that you come through has got a kind of power level, and as you rank up your weapons and armor, your power level will increase, and so each biome will start to come a little bit easier. Some resources glow a bit differently at night time, so basically they turn into something different. So some of the weapons and armors might require moonlight seaweed, as so that means you have to pick up seaweed at night time. So if you're having trouble finding where resource is or why you can't find it, make sure you're looking through the actual kind of journal book at the start menu before you start a game. As if by magic I managed to get myself some armor and gear, you can see that is the Bifrost portal, another big feature you need to know about. If you manage to earn a whole bunch of golden horns in your first try and you've killed at least one giant, the Bifrost portal will open up. That's how you need to escape if you want to keep the golden horns that you've already accrued. You keep your experience, but obviously don't keep any resources, but the golden horns you won't keep if your tree gets destroyed and you don't make your escape. You effectively have to choose and see if you're gonna be able to make it with this run. If it's all become overwhelming and you know you're not gonna survive, then you need to get out there with that golden horn. You can pick up golden horns like I just did from a drop randomly, and again, lots of the quests and missions will give them to you as rewards. Defeating giants sometimes also gives you the golden horns, so you can come away with quite a few. That's why it's important to recognize when you're gonna fail or not and make your escape. Otherwise, gather resources, plenty of wood, plenty of stone. In fact, stone and iron ore is the most important thing. Wood isn't as important as you definitely need a lot more stone and ore, and it's not as abundant. If it can be harvested, it will tell you as soon as you go up close to it, so in between the enemy camps that you'll be scouting out, make sure you go and harvest absolutely every piece of stone and ore that you find. You can go ahead and kill a bunch of wildlife in the game, but you'll notice that also you get a whole bunch of leather and some of that stuff from facing off against mobs too. Once you find a shrine, you need to take a few seconds to go ahead and activate it, so make sure you do that, and there's usually some enemies around. So one of the new features is the ability to able to swim. You just simply have to press the circle button to jump into the water, and then press the A button to get out. But you do have a stamina bar, and if that stamina bar drains, you will die. So swimming really is a last resort, but it's still better than previously where you go in the water and die instantly. If you do die, you'll lose all the souls that you've already accrued, but you will should keep some of your items and armors, but you may need to go back and get some of the resources that you've been gathering. It all just depends what mode you're playing. In saga mode, you do lose your souls and you do have to go back. But as I said, you can turn that off or on in the actual survival mode. When you respawn, you'll spawn back at the stones, so yeah, be careful. You'll notice that just popped up, a stag has ascended from the world. There are limited time events, and some of these you need to complete if you do want to find the final door towards the saga boss. They're relatively easy to do. Sometimes you might come across a prisoner that needs rescuing, that might be the hardest. Otherwise, it's a case of finding some chickens or a deer and hopefully killing it or petting it. So do try and do them when they do pop up. You can roll off the cliffs to get down to lower bases, and yes, if you do want to go get your stuff back, make sure you've got enough decent weapons and armors to do so, or it's going to be a case of hitting and running. This ash beach is important in Season 2, because you have to find one of these to hopefully find a shipbuilding yard, and that's one of the things that you're going to need to rebuild, so that you can actually get some ships and travel and explore some more of the lands. Not every ash beach is going to have a shipyard, so you need to find the right one. That was a plinth that gave me some extra special ability. You can see if I press the Y button or the triangle on the PlayStation, you can do some special damage with it like this. You can actually use that special ability to harvest trees and rocks or iron ore if you don't have any weapons or tools. That altar was blue, and then if you come across a red one, that's going to give you life. And if you come across a yellow one, that gives you a speed boost. Pay attention and use these as frequently as you can to take on the enemies. And they can be a real game changer as you upgrade and get better abilities from your blessings. 
Remember you gain experience with killing and harvesting. Once you get to a certain stage, you can go ahead and choose your class. As you progress through the game, you'll unlock more of them from completing challenges in saga mode, but you're pretty limited at the beginning. Then you simply spend your blessing points on upgrades with different paths and different unique attributes. Some of them might fit your playstyle a lot better than others, and I will go through some of these. Or check out my older guides, which I've done over 25 of, to see which way to play some of these classes. So as soon as a blessing point pops up, make sure you utilise it. Once you've gathered enough raw resources on a couple runs, go back to town to the Tinkerer and make sure you upgrade to at least level 2 so that you can start locking cut stone, wooden boards and iron ore ingots. This is so important, otherwise you will not be able to do this solo. There are three farms directly around your settlement. You'll find a lumberyard, a hunting lodge and some sort of quarry. You can see it'll tell you exactly how much resources you need to go ahead and build it. Once they're built, they won't take any damage from attacks. They'll simply keep generating resources and they'll dump them inside your community chest. So make sure you try and get the quarry set up as fast as possible, then the lumber yard, then the hunting lodge. And you do really want to get this done as soon as possible. So gather lots of resources. Don't maybe explore or get too bogged down in combat. It's just about getting stone and iron ore as much as possible. The quarry really should be the first one that you upgrade. Obviously if you're playing with others then it gets a bit more different and you can pull your resources much more and you'll get these built much quicker. But for solo play you really do have to get this done at least by day 4. So focus on getting stone and ore above wood. The newest addition as I've told you a couple times now is the shipyard. You'll find this on one of the ash beaches nearby and this is what you need to do to go ahead and get a small, medium or large boat. Obviously if you're playing solo you'll only need a small one. The other size boats are for depending on how many players you've got and you're all going together. It only costs wooden boards and wrought iron but you also do need souls of course and ancient cores. Now ancient cores you get as rewards from missions but also from defeating giants. So the shipyard shouldn't be your main focus yet, you want to get your farm set up first and then make sure you've got decent armour and weapons because the areas that you explore will be much much too high for you. So while we're waiting for that let's go and kill some giants. There are three types of giants, you've got the ice giants, you've got the sand giant which I like to call him but actually he's the lightning giant and then you've got Agrabah, she is the poison or dark giant. They both have their own unique points in terms of damage, some of them will hit the ground a lot more, this guy he puts a small small totem that will give you lightning damage so it's always best to destroy the totem first. If you've got any kind of weapon with poison or that purple stuff on it then that's the one to use against this guy. If you've got any arrows make sure you switch and use them arrows too. It might seem scary but actually they're not that hard. As long as you've bought some potions or you've topped them up you should be able to take them out. Just focus on the totem on this guy and just Saxa will be fairly easy to take on. The bulbs do quite a bit of damage so you kind of have to let them hit you and then kind of run away just before they explode. But that's probably the most challenging feature. As the giants progress though, they will get harder and harder and they'll have bigger health pools and do more damage. So you're going to need much better armour by the time you face maybe your third giant. A giant should spawn on day two and it takes a couple days usually to get to your village. So the best advice is to go and try and face it as early as you can, but you might not be able to get through certain biomes yet until you get more resources. So you can leave it until the last minute, the first one, as long as you can defeat it fairly easily because you've got some decent weapons and armors. But I'm only talking level two, maybe even level one. But do remember, the giants will get harder from one here out. Also, last tip to do with crafting and vital resources for your farms. Sometimes you'll have plenty of ore, but you can go ahead and convert that into iron first and then convert the iron and the ore into raw iron. You do need both to make the raw iron. So do check that you haven't somehow accumulated a whole bunch of ore, but haven't realised that you could actually process it and refine it. Also, I still believe if anything gets put into your community chest, it doesn't necessarily give you the option to craft it at the crafting station straight away. You do have to take it out of the chest to go and then use it, if I remember rightly. And that's pretty much it. You're not going to get to the saga boss on your first try, maybe not second, third, fourth, fifth, or maybe even seventh try. You're going to have to learn about the drops that come, the quest fragments, different hideout fragments that you can get, and the special event fragments. But you will come across NPCs and traders in far places that you can also go ahead and sell certain items to. And yes, you can buy some of them fragments as well to make life a bit easier. 
but you should be doing runs. Every time go as far as you can, and then when you want to get back to base soon, if you can't find a teleport stone very close by at an altar, you can click the right stick in and it will teleport you back to home. But it does have a cooldown, so you should really only use that at the last moment if you've gone too far and maybe your base is getting attacked. You will also come across NPCs that have their own extra quests, and these can be gained for lots of good resources and gear. But they often require you to kill five of a certain creature or take on a certain mob. So yeah, maybe avoid them until you've done some of the quests back at the settlement first. And then last thing to explain while you're exploring, I told you that some biomes you might need special armor for. Well, when you go in the desert, you're going to be overheated. Now you can run through the desert for a little while before that happens. And you can get elixirs that reduce that for happening too. But don't panic, go and grab some resources. And if you do desperately need to get out because it starts affecting your health, then you can always teleport back to base. So if you can't find certain resources, make sure you check in the journal as these are the kind of biomes where you find some of them harder ones. Just to finish off this segment, we're going to show you what happens when everything goes a bit pear-shaped. Day 8 is another one of them blood moons. I've got much harder enemies. I didn't actually manage to repair my defences, and so they've managed to get through, and I'm not defending very well here. The tree changes colour, and eventually it will go red, and that means it won't be giving you much life either, and yes, it's pretty much close to being game over. It's at this point you knew you were in trouble. When one of these guys gets to the tree, it is going to be game over. So try and not let that happen, as well as not letting giants get anywhere close to your village. So your progress will carry over, as I said. Even though it said Golden Horns earned one, I think that was down to hitting a certain point in my actual pass, rather than me being able to escape with one. You see, I've got a Builder Starter Kit there. That's one of the rewards that you got, and that's going to help you obviously get some of the resources much, much better. And I did a fairly decent run. That was the first time I played Tribes of Midgard. You know, I would say about eight months. I was pretty rusty, but I was pretty pleased that I managed to get so high. Each end of season, the progress that you're making in that kind of battle pass system, it does get reset as they add brand new items, new armor pieces, and much more. So if you do want to collect everything, you're going to have to grind and make sure you complete all 50 levels. Double check your customized bar and see if there's any brand new accessories and stuff that you can equip. This is where you can choose what start kit to go ahead and have. And obviously you've got loads of skins and different stuff you can buy. When you buy a weapon using the golden horns, it pretty much gets added to the pool or as an option for you to craft. So you don't automatically start the game with any weapons or armors. You always start with nothing unless it's a starter pack. These are basically just open up easier ways to get some of the stuff, maybe, or different types of elemental damage types and some of them later on. That's why it's so important you escape the Bifrost with your horns intact. And there we go. That's how to play Tribes and Midgard. Go and check out my guides. I've done one on that defeating the first Saga boss Fenra, but I never got around to actually play in the second season. So I'm really keen to get on it. If you want to come and play with me, then check out my streams I'm going to be doing. Come and join my Discord and maybe we can slay your Munda the Serpent together. Leave a like, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you rat bags for more survival guides very soon. Bye-bye.